Welcome to this video on installing Netfort Land Guardian. My name is Dara Delaney, I'm Head of Technical Services here at Netfort. So before I start and show you the install process, just a reminder is why you need Netfort Land Guardian. Well if you want to see who is using your bandwidth, or you want to monitor activity on Windows file shares, maybe you want to analyze internet user activity, or just investigate instance with the Land Guardian forensics, or maybe you just want to know what users are doing on your network, well then Land Guardian is an ideal tool for you. So before you start some important points, Land Guardian can be installed on a physical or a virtual platform. You do not need an operating system or database, it's all included in the download. You do not need to install agents or clients or servers or workstations, so it's a Easy install, passive, it doesn't interfere with the network. All you need is a span or mirror port off your core switch. So what do we mean by a core switch? Well, it varies depending on the type of network you have. But at this simple example here, what we've got is lots of clients, wireless access points, all connecting back, usually using fiber, back to a switch. And we've got servers also connecting back to that same switch, which is in our data center. So this would be seen as the core switch on this network. You may have one or two, but you've got a single data center core switch. These switches, these managed switches, allow you to set up what's known as a span or monitoring port. So as traffic moves between clients and servers, a copy of it is sent to this monitoring port. That is connected to the LAN Guardian, and that then gives us a data source so it can do deep packet inspection. You may also want to consider monitoring the firewall connection here, which is a really important point on your, on your network if you want to see what's coming in and out. If you've got a larger network, we also have an option for you where you have, can have a probe in one data center and a probe in a second data center. But for the trial, people usually just set up a single LAN guardian monitoring a core switch. So just find the port on this core switch and you're ready to go. So let's now talk about the requirements that you need for the platform or the server to install on. So let me talk briefly about the hardware requirements. So if I want to install on a physical server, what I need is, now I know I've got quite a small unit here, I need a server or maybe a PC and what it needs is two network cards. So I've got two built in here so you got to have two network cards available. If it's something with just one, just put in an extra network card. Now the specs required are shown on the screen, but this particular one here, I've got four gigabytes of memory. I've got a quad core CPU. My two network cards are there. I think it's got about a 200 gigabyte disk. So this is a perfect unit to install the LAN Guardian software on. Reminder again, no operating system required. Everything is included in the download. So I've got my image downloads and I put it on a CD key here or on a USB stick. Um, going to pop in here, going to boot up off the USB. Now let's move on to that stage. I have now powered up my server. So on the console you should see some text fly by here. It's just going through the boot up process. If you don't see this coming up just check the boot priority on the system. It may not be booting up off the CD or USB. There are two parts of the install. We've got a wizard here that we complete through the console and we finalize the install through web browser. Okay, so it's telling us this low right handed operating system because again Langardian includes its own operating system so we just say yes that's okay. Type in number one for the disk it found here. Sure you want to continue? Type yes. It's found two network cards connected so I'm going to pick number one here from my management interface and I'm going to connect number two to my span or mirror port. We give it an IP address. Mask. Default gateway. And finally a DNS server. So just double check, that looks fine. Type yes. And the system now goes and installs. So this takes a couple of seconds for it to copy on its operating system, database, and then it'll prompt to do a reboot. So that's now complete. We press enter to restart, and the system goes and restarts. The boot up 
will now take a couple of minutes. Um, it sets up databases, does a lot of checks. So probably looking at about one to two minutes for it to boot up initially. So just wait at the console until this completes. So it looks like it's now complete and it's telling us here to go to a browser and type in either HTTP or HTTPS to the IP address we just assigned. So let's go do that now. So in my browser here, I've typed in the IP address at Langardine. I get an untrusted message here in the browser. So you can just add an exception to that and you then get to the Langardian wizard. So this allows us to complete the install. So we tick the box to agree with the license terms. Double check the network settings, which look good. Then check the email settings. I'm going to leave them as the default. Next up, we check the, the clock. I'm going to synchronize at an NTP server. Time looks correct, so we just go next. We now need to set a GUI password. So this is for the administrator account. Let's go next. Next point is important if you want to get usernames and reports. It allows us to link Lankardi to AD. So you type in a username, a password, and a domain controller IP address. So good time to set it up now. I'm actually going to skip it and come back to it, but for yourselves, if you want to get usernames, now's the time to set this up. Go next. So now it sets up what we call our sensor. So that's the connection back to the core switch where we've got our span or mirror port. If the link is active and we're getting span traffic. If you're not getting span traffic, there's a video guide here which you can click on. And in the final part of this video, I'll show you quickly how you can set up a span or mirror port. So for me, this looks good. Click finish, and then I can log on for the first time. So just type in the password you just set, and log on. Oops, type in the correct one. Just log on. You should start, data should start to appear in the dashboards pretty much immediately. So I've got some DNS traffic coming in here. Graphics are starting to fill up. So you should see stuff almost straight away, but usually leave it a couple of minutes to get some meaningful data. So now that completes the Langardian install. You're now up and running. You now got visibility on your network. Finally, I just want to talk quickly about setting up a span or a mirror port. As I mentioned earlier, first thing is identify a switch where you want to connect your Langardian to. Ideally, a core switch somewhere where your servers are connected. Then you gotta figure out how you can set up span port. Now with Cisco, which I'm gonna cover now, it's relatively easy. If you don't have Cisco, just do Google for this core switch. So if you've got a Dell switch, just search for Dell port mirroring, for example or whatever your switch is. And there's lots and lots of guides out there on how to set up uh, port mirroring. There's also a very good reference here. If you go to the wireshark.org wiki, um, do a search there for the, um, the switch reference. And it's got the span mirror setups for all of the most common switches out there. Anything from Cisco, Via, Juniper, Link, Sys, the whole lot of there. And that again is on the wireshark.org wiki. It's got a fantastic uh, reference there. On the Netfort website, we also have got some free software which allows you to set up a span port on a Cisco device. So you just type in your name there, download it. So that's what I'm going to use. So I've got it running here already. This is the app. Type in the IP address of the switch. Uh, enter in a username that can connect to the switch. And if you have an enabled password set, just type it in. Let's go connect. So what do we want to do? Well, we've got VLANs configured on this switch. We've got some interfaces. So I want to monitor the uh, VLANs that are on this switch. So I've got one span session configured. I've got one available. So what do I do? Well, I can select this VLAN, the default VLAN, where everything is located. In the drop down here, select source ingress and egress. So that means this will be, a, we're going to monitor this VLAN and both ingress, which is inbound and egress outbound traffic to it. So everything associated with this VLAN. And the next thing we do is we select the interface where Langardian is connected to. So in the drop down here, you set that as a destination or a span port. 
click on apply changes well you probably as well to click the box there save just to start up then apply changes to switch and that's it your span port is set up so just remind you again select a source so in my case I'm going to choose a VLAN and I want to choose ingress and egress you could also pick ports individually but VLANs are so easy just select the VLAN in question so again select it with ingress and egress find the port that your Langardian is connected to so port 20 and set that as a span or destination port apply the changes to the switch and that's it you're up and running it's very very simple operation and that's it You've installed LangGuardian, you've configured a spam port, you now got visibility on your network.